time now for our rants and raves of the week. And I'll start with you, Dan. I have a rant for Tennessee State Senator Stacey Campbell, uh, who this week learned that one of his nemeses, okay. uh, a reporter named Carrie Gervin at the Metro Pulse newspaper in Knoxville, Tennessee, was among a number of people who have been laid off. And, uh, and he sent her a nasty Facebook message that said, so do you have any comments now? And uh, I mean, really? it was just nasty, no class. Apparently they had had some difficulties yeah. in the past. He's a real character. He's referred to Obamacare as the equivalent of a Nazi death train. Uh, oh. he, he lost his primary in August, so he's a oh. lame duck anyway. And I, it doesn't sound like too many people are gonna miss him. Hmm. All right, Farrah, what do you got? I have a rant uh, against the jerks who run the super PAC called Secure America Now, which uh, put a, the image of journalist James Foley, who was beheaded um, in their political ad that was... And it was the beheading video, not that shot we have up there. It was right. the one where he was kneeling on a desert. Right, and they, and they used that in uh, all these battleground states to uh, go against... Democrats who apparently did nothing to secure our borders, and it was just—it was just. They did terrible. take it down. They did today. take it down, and Scott Brown, you know, said it was disrespectful to the family. But what were you thinking? What were they even trying to say? Yeah, yes. it was—it didn't make any sense. It was an asinine thing to do, and 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 disrespectful as well. Yeah. All right, Josh. I'll start off just by on your 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 rant about uh, the Metro Pulse newspaper that closed down. It, it shut down completely. An alternative weekly, a bad week for all weeklies. Oh yeah. San Francisco Bay Guardian, in addition to the Providence Phoenix last week. Um, Scripps, the newspaper company that owns them, actually uh, said uh, you can get a severance package, but only if you refuse to talk to the media. So boo hiss to anybody who owns a news company that tells your, your reporters you're not allowed to talk to the media. That's hypocrisy of the highest order. But that's not even my actual rant. Not uncommon, by the way. Uh, yeah. Totally yeah. common, but they deserve to be called out Smart, on every, but every, every single time. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, my rant is about uh, the app Whisper. I don't know if anyone here is, no. has ever Sounds used good. it. It's, a, it's an app that is uh, really growing in popularity among a, a young younger crowd. The idea is social media, Facebook and, and Twitter are great for sharing things, but sometimes you just want to be anonymous. You want to just be able to say your deepest, darkest thoughts. Isn't that, that what that comments are for? That's all I've ever <laughs> yeah. seen on the internet. <laughs> but this is supposed to be done where it's not even tied to a user account. You don't have a, a handle attached to or anything. It's all anonymous. And the idea is you're sharing these secrets. Anyway, they've gotten a lot of venture capital money. They've mm -hmm. gotten a significant amount of success. And it's become a way that news sometimes breaks. Uh, people will leak something to whisper and it ends up being becoming a story. Anyway. Uh, the Guardian, the newspaper in the UK, was interested in working with them and went to go talk to them about uh, how they work and found out that actually you're not all that anonymous with Whisper, that they are tracking the physical locations of the users of the app, tracking which ones are leaking interesting secrets, mm. and in some cases sharing that with outside parties. Mm. The, the key lesson here is that anonymity is not a real thing on the internet. Anyone who promises you anonymity needs to have a technical background and needs to have a promise that they're actually going to follow through on it, and Whisper was called out appropriately this week for not really doing that. Mm. What if a serial killer starts whispering? What if a serial killer when says you want them to know One of the great that questions. <laughs> All right, John, what do you got? Well, I have a rant about cocooning. Now, of course, oh, yeah. this is the art of surrounding yourself with media that just reinforces your own biases. If you're a conservative, you watch Fox and read the Weekly Standard exclusively. If you're a liberal, it's MSNBC and The Nation or whatever. Uh, well, some blogger... Uh, uh, did actually a clever thing. You know how you can go on a Twitter site and see who that person follows? Uh, he obviously had time on his hands. He took every staff member of the New York Times, uh, checked their followers, and ranked who they follow the most. And you have to get way, way down the list to get to a single right of center voice. Now, this doesn't necessarily prove anything definitively. The, uh, journalists could be getting information from other sources than Twitter, certainly. But if you use it the way I think many of us do, as a quick way to check in on a variety of voices and news sources, it's disturbing to think that, uh, say, a political reporter for the New York Times would be 
cocooning uh, with just voices from the left. That's not any way to do business. If, you, if you're going to cocoon like that, if you want to be a larvae, that's great. If you want to be an informed uh, and a thoughtful news consumer or uh, even journalist, it seems to me you've got to reach out a little harder than that for different perspectives. Now here's one of the great findings of that study. Uh, more times journalists follow the Kim Jong-un parody account than follow the account of their own editor, Dean Bacay. Ooh. So that was wonderful. That is, well, this is a Dean. great parody account. And it tweets I, a lot more often than Dean Bacay, who's well, tweeted twice true. in his life. I, I will point out that the second most followed non-New York Times account was the Neiman Lab account, which my, well, my staff well, runs. So proud for them. And I will admit, I do follow a, t a Twitter feed called Boston Pigeon. What? Where it's just anecdotes from the life of a, of a local pigeon. Uh -huh. A liberal pigeon or a conservative it. pigeon? Uh, I, his politics or her politics are unclear. Interesting. I yeah. recommend Florida. Man. You're not cocooning. Uh, <laughs> definitely not. I, I not have when a it comes rant, and John, you're going to have to jump in and help me out with this one because right. I was really outraged on a number of levels. And pointing this at Politico for running an article this week entitled Martha Chokley. This was a piece of unadulterated crap by a <laughs> drive-by reporter who did nothing but aggregate old information and some of it inaccurate and just mashed it all together and put it out in this misogynist, really awful, you know, the opening line, Martha Coakley, the Bill Buckner of politics, if she even knows who the Red Sox are. I mean, just, and then, and, 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 you know, had other misinformation like it's long been, you know, refuted and Pro, no, known to, deemed true that she did not take off extended time during that uh, they, in fact she didn't take any time off that was an old saw that was disproven years ago and he regurgitated that he called uh, Susan Tracy here uh, a former congresswoman she was never in, in Congress she was this, I think a city councilor and she ran for other office but he, it was just a regurgitated piece of garbage and the problem with this is though that it, it gets legs I had right before I came uh, on the show uh, one of my uh, uh, nephews from Washington emailed it to me and said, you should read this, like, like I hadn't mm. seen it, and said, interesting stuff, you know, good fodder, maybe good for Beat the Press. And I said, I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, Susan Tracy was a state rep, by yeah. the way, who ran for Congress, yeah. but she was never a member of Congress. You know, this, unfortunately, so I don't want to sound too parochial here, but this often happens with out-of-town press mm. when they try to cover us here. Uh, they basically, New York and Washington journalists as a group, seem to think we're this cute, yeah, quaint yeah. little, you know, the covered bridge that yeah, yeah. they blow up and it won't <laughs> fall down. And uh, it's just cute little stories like that. And our politics is yeah. covered in much the same way. The narrative of Martha Coakley Blewett has a kernel of truth in it, but it's far from the complete truth about that special election. And it's a shame to see not just this uh, reporter, but others continuing to just peddle that, just as you put it, crap. It's been it's garbage. All right. Thanks for that, John. All right. That's our show. Tell us what you think. Has the media gone overboard on Ebola? Is there a dim future for 24-hour cable news? Weigh in on our website, beatthepress.org. You can also catch up on past episodes or watch any of this show you may have missed. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for joining us.